70-741 Lesson 9 Implementing VPN and Direct Access Solutions We've got a lot to cover in this lesson, but let's take our time and have a thorough understanding of it. Once you've completed Lesson 9, you should be able to implement remote access and site-to-site -site VPN solutions using remote access gateways, understand configuring different VPN protocol options, authentication options, what VPN reconnect is, how to create and configure connection profiles, how to determine when to use remote access VPN and site-to-site -site VPN, as well as configuring the appropriate protocols. You'll cover install and configure direct access, as well as server requirements and implement config client configurations. And finally, troubleshooting direct access. The purpose of this lesson is to provide you with an understanding of how to implement VPNs and direct access solutions. VPNs, virtual private networks, link two computers or network devices through a wide area network, a WAN, such as the internet. Because the internet is a public network and is considered insecure, uh, it's not just considered insecure, it is insecure, the data sent between those two computers or devices needs to be encapsulated and encrypted to be secure. VPN connections can provide the following. Encapsulation. Encapsulates or places private data in a packet with a header containing routing information that allows the data to traverse the transit network such as the internet. Authentication is used, it provides the identity of the user or computer that is trying to connect. Data encryption ensures data remains private by encrypting it prior to transmission, preventing unauthorized users from accessing it. When it's received, the intended recipient decrypts it. Of course, the encryption and decryption depends on the sender and receiver. Both must have a common or related encryption key. The larger the key, often better the security. And finally, data integrity. This verifies that the data sent over the VPN has not been modified during transit. This is usually done by using a cryptographic checksum that is based on an encryption key known only to the sender and to the sender or receiver. When the data is received, the same checksum calculation is performed and the values are compared. If the values are the same, both prior to transmission and after receipt, the data has not been tampered with. Data integrity provides one of the pillars of the cybersecurity triad, integrity, verifying that information has not been unmodified by unauthorized parties. Data encryption provides confidentiality, one of the other pillars of cybersecurity. Understand that there, the VPN can basically be used in two different scenarios, one of which will break into two subsections. Firstly, a client connecting to a remote access server to access internal resources from off-site, remote access VPN, or on-demand. The second two subsets of the second scenario are two remote sites that are connected to each other using a VPN tunnel between two servers or devices, one of which is located at each site. Alternatively, two different organizations could create a VPN tunnel so that users from one organization can privately access the resources in the other organization and vice versa. The following types of tunneling protocols are used with a VPN RAS server running on Windows Server 2016. Point-to-point -point tunneling protocol, PPTP. Layer 2 tunneling protocol, L2TP with I Internet Protocol Security, that's IPsec. Internet Key Exchange version 2, or IKEV2. And Secure Socket Tunneling Protocol, SSTP. When selecting the appropriate VPN protocol to use, Take into consideration the operating systems you'll be using, 
The client's needs and ability to traverse firewalls, NAT devices, and web proxies. The authentication requirements for computers as well as users. And finally, implementation such as site-to-site -site VPN or remote access VPN. Site-to-site -site VPN connections connect to private networks. This can be two branch offices, or it could be a branch office that's connected to an organization's primary or headquarters site. Or it could be the previous example of two organizations who wish to be able to share information between each other securely. The VPN connection allows routed connections to the remote site or network while helping to maintain secure communications over the internet. Let's take a step back and discuss some of the protocols that are used. Point-to-point -point tunneling protocol. It has widespread support with nearly all versions of Windows. It's a VPN protocol based on a much older or legacy point-to-point -point PPP protocol that was used with modems. PPTP uses transmission control protocol, that's TCP connection for tunnel management, as well as utilizing TCP port 1723. Also is L2TP with IPsec, layer two tunneling protocol with IPsec. Point to point tunneling protocol supports only the authentication of the user. Whereas with L2TP with IPsec, computers manually authenticate themselves to each other prior to the user being authenticated. This increases the security. The IPsec is what provides the security while the layer two tunneling protocol provides the tunnel. L2TP is the industry standard when setting up secure tunnels. It does support a number of authentication methods. It support a mechanism for pre-shared keys, digital certificates, or Kerberos for mutual authentication. Understand that pre-shared keys are basically passwords and should only be used on test networks where you do not want to set up a public key infrastructure, PKI. Digital certificates, or which are stored in a format that can't be modified, are a much more secure option. They're used by certification authorities that you trust or, and are issued. Kerberos is our native authentication program protocol in our Windows domain ever since Windows Server 2003. And it does provide the easiest way to secure VPN connections in a domain-based environment. So by using IPsec, LP2 T L2TP IPsec VPN connections can provide data confidentiality, data integrity, and data authentication. The IPsec provides mutual authentication, anti-replay, and non-repudiation, just like digital certificates. Kerberos can be used only when both computers involved in the Layer 2 Tunnel Protocol tunnel are in the same forest. L2TP uses IPsec to encrypt the PPP packets. A VPN using L2TP will use UDP ports 500, 1701, 4500, as well as IP protocol 50. Let's discuss the authentication options for VPN connections. We have PPP, which is point-to-point -point protocol authentication. It's user-level authentication, usually a username and password. With the VPN connection, the VPN server authenticates. The VPN client attempts to the connection using that PPP user-level authentication method and verifies that the client has the appropriate authentication. We can also use IKE to exchange either computer certificates or a pre-shared key. Forms of authentication in form in, in include PAP, which is password authentication protocol. However, this uses plain text and should be avoided at all costs. 
we also have CHAP, Challenge Handshake Authentication Protocol. It's based on a challenge response authentication that uses an industry standard MD5 hashing scheme to encrypt the response. It was an industry standard for years and is still popular. MS CHAP v2, Microsoft CHAP version 2, is a step better as it provides two-way authentication, that is mutual authentication. MS CHAP v2 is the only authentication protocol that Windows Server 2016 provides that allows you to change an expired password during the connection process. EAP, Extensible Authentication Protocol, is a universal framework that allows third-party vendors to develop custom schemes that can be utilized for such as retinal scans, voice recognition, fingerprint identification, these types of biometric functions, as well as in Kerberos and digital certificates. PEAP, Protected Extensible Authentication Protocol, encapsulates the EAP with an encrypted and authenticated TLS tunnel. Direct Access is a feature that was first introduced with Windows 7 and Windows Server 2008 R2. It provides seamless intranet connectivity to direct access client computers when they're connected to the internet. This is different from the traditional VPN connection, as in direct access connections are automatically established and they provide an always on seamless connectivity. Direct access overcomes some of the limitations of VPNs by automatically establishing a bi-directional connection from a client computer to the organization's network using IPsec and IPv6. A direct access connection to a target intranet resource is initiated when the direct access client connects to the direct access server through IPv6. IPv6 or IPsec is then negotiated between the client and server. And then finally, the connection is established. In general, the process can be broken in down to the direct ac access client computer running Windows 7 or newer operating system detects that it's connected to a network. The direct access client computer then determines whether it's connected to the intranet. That would be the internal business network. If the client is connected to the intranet, it does not use direct access. The direct access client connects to the direct access server by using IPv6 and IPsec. If the client is not using IPv6, it can attempt using 6 to 4 or Terardo, Terardo tunneling to send IPv4 encapsulated IPv6 traffic. If the client cannot reach the direct access server using one of these methods, the client tries to connect using IPHTTPS, that's Internet Protocol over Secure Hypertext Transfer Protocol. This uses an SSL, Secure Sockets Layer, connection to encapsulate the IPv6 traffic. As part of establishing the IPsec session for the tunnel to reach the intranet DNS server and domain controller, the direct access client and server authenticate each other using computer certificates for authentication. When the user logs on, the direct access client establishes a second IP tunnel, IPsec tunnel to access the resources of the intranet. The direct access client and server authenticate each other using a combination of computer and user credentials. The direct access server forwards traffic between the access client and the intranet resources to which the user has been granted access. And so to recap, remember that VPNs link two computers or network devices through a wide area networks LAN WAN, such as the Internet. This could be from a single computer attempting to connect to its home network or allowing two 
locations to create a static tunnel because the internet is a public network and is considered insecure data sent between these two endpoints is encapsulated and encrypted the VPN connections provide encapsulation authentication data encryption and data integrity integrity therefore maintaining two of the three pillars of cybersecurity uh, just as a side note, those pillars are confidentiality, integrity, and availability. VPN connections can maintain confidentiality and integrity. However, they do not provide availability. As we just talked about, a site-to-site -site VPN connection connects two private networks. The remote access or dial-up VPN allows clients to connect to a server through a secure virtual private network connection. To maintain constant connectivity, you can use IKE v2, which will automatically establish a VPN connection when internet connectivity is available. This can own IP IKE v2 can only be used with Windows 7 and newer. Direct access is a feature that was introduced with Windows 7 and Windows Server 2008 R2 that provides seamless connectivity to a in internet or intranet without the need for a dial-up. Different than the traditional VPN, the direct access connections are automatically established and they provide an always-on seamless connectivity. The clients use what's called an NLS network locator server to determine their location. The NLS is an internal web server. If the client computer can connect with HTTPS to that URL, the client computer assumes it's on the intranet or business network and disables direct access components. If the client can't reach it, it then assumes it's on the internet and direct access is utilized. I hope this was helpful in supplementing your knowledge on 70-741 Lesson 9.